Hey y'all, this is Eliana with Winery Design. Thanks for being here again this week and we are going to be working on this huge furniture set. These guys are only the nightstands. They are enormous. 32 inches tall by 32 inches wide and this is just part of the set that I'll be working on. Like I said, this is a set and there is a 10 drawer dresser, a six drawer armoire, which is so big. I didn't even measure it, but I know it's over eight feet tall. And then there is a giant California King bed. So this piece took me a couple of days to do and I'm against a deadline. So I'm rushing through basically cleaning them, scuff sanding them, priming twice, two coats of paint, then applying one coat of um, the top coat and then doing glazing an additional uh, top of, uh, of uh, coat of top coat on top of all of that. So there is a whole lot of work that I'm going to take you through. And uh, right now I'm just applying the primer on these pieces. I will then add the drawers into the dressers and the nightstands and paint those or prime those and paint them uh, with the drawers in. And then I'll come back and do all of the details and all of that good stuff. Let's just kind of show you what all I'm doing. Super loud over here because I have all the fans going. The primer is drying on these. And these are the three, the two nightstands, the bottom of the hutch and the dresser. And everything is drying. I do the, the uh, frames first and then I bring in the drawers and do the drawers later. These are all the little details that take so much time. You either do the prep and tape and all of that and take the time then, or it's time doing this later on. I do it both ways, it just kind of depends on what mood I'm in. I am super lucky and so grateful to have my daughter come in a couple of times a week, mostly weekly, to come in and help me a few hours. This time she came in and she was able to do the liners for me. This is self-adhesive vinyl for the drawer liners and she had a little bit of a struggle and here's just to show you that not everything goes perfectly. She's done this a few times for me so she knows what she's doing. but. And, and for the most part, you know, after she's done with, let's see, she did so 10, 16, 19, 22 drawers. This is like the, I think she'd done well over a dozen of them. And this one, she had a really, just a huge struggle with. And she had recorded a few of them and she asked me to show this one just to show that even though we've done this many times, the struggle is real sometimes. And it's just part of the job and part of the fun that we have, but it's all in good fun, if you will. And I do appreciate what she does for me every single time. My daughter came in, she's off from work today, or she worked early today. 
and she's doing all of the liners. I really appreciate that because this is a lot of work. So she's almost done with all of the liners. Thanks, Jess. Look how beautiful. I'm starting to phase two. Meanwhile, this is Bella, my work dog. That's not mine, really. Look how pretty. A lot of people are scared of glazing, but it really isn't that hard. You just have to kind of get used to it and know or practice before you get started so that you lose that fear of the imperfections because there will be some. I prefer to mix my own glaze, so I prefer to buy clear glaze and then mix it to the color that I need. In this case, I am using Dixie Belle's uh, Silk and the color Anchor, which is a black. I don't have specifics to you, I just know that I add enough black until I see the depth of the, of the color that I want to use. Um, I probably did a pint of this to, I would say, one third of a pint of paint. and it just goes. I like to have rags that are wet and wipe them with that and then clean my rag a couple of times as I am removing the glaze in the spots that I want to have less of it. And where I want to have more, I just leave additional on there, but it's not going to be a perfect job. I think I will explain this better. I think the biggest thing with glazing is knowing that not one piece is going to be the same as the next, that you have to let go of some of the OCD. In my case, that's what I call it because I like it to be the same, to look exactly the same. And with glazing, one piece is not gonna look exactly like the other, but they're both gonna look similar enough as long as you take off the same amount of glazing and the details are the same you can keep that basically around the same uh, color and the same quantity of glaze basically I think they're looking pretty good I still have to work on the most ornate pieces let me show you I have to work on this giant I have to work on the bed and I have to work on this giant that's gonna be pretty intricate i'm looking forward to painting it they haven't been painted this the bed and the mirror have not been painted yet so i'm not gonna take you through the same to show you i'm basically going to clean prime or clean sand prime paint and then glaze i will bring you back to these pieces when I'm glazing because that glazing into those is gonna look pretty crazy. I think it's gonna be exciting. Let me continue working. This guy is next and I've got to have this ready. Uh, today is Friday and they gotta pick this up on Tuesday. So I might have to work through the weekend just to get this pieces finished. We shall see. It's Saturday morning. I'm still working on the Giants. Today's turn is the bed. And this is the worst piece. This is the piece that I was dreading getting to. I've got to sand as much of this off as possible. Scru um, scrub sand the entire piece, of course. But this piece is one of the dirtiest. I don't think, you know, I think the mirror and the armoire got some sort of cleaning. This one never got any type of cleaning. Look at all that dust. It's hard to see over here. It's a lot worse. Uh, up close. But the entire piece is like that. So, gotta do that. Gotta do both sides of this one. This is the footboard. The ornate 
part is on the other side. I'm gonna do this first, flip it, do the other side. This one, although is the headboard, nobody's gonna see behind it. There's still this part right here is round enough, invisible enough that I have to come back this way, anyways, to um to paint it. So I still I still have to at least prime it and leave it prime on that side. But I've got to wrap around and paint at least to here. So if I'm gonna paint it here, I might as well just paint the whole thing in the back too. So that's what I'm doing this morning is cleaning and prepping and I'm not gonna bore you guys with this you guys know how it goes but I will take a couple of clips I'm gonna do a couple of clips of how I'm trying to get into those ornate places to clean it and then I will show you when I'm priming and then I will show you when it's done which when it's done is going to look like this guy now this is just as ornate when it's got two coats, coats of paint already on it. Um, I had a drip right here, so I've got to come back and sand that and correct that. But other than that, no more drips anywhere. This one just has to get um, glazed and taken out of here. Now the glazing on this is gonna be tricky also because I normally just grab a whole bunch of glaze on my brush, go in it, and then wipe but all of this is going to drip if I do that. So I'm probably gonna have to do it with a more, um, with a smaller brush, with an artist brush of some sort, and maybe use a dry or several dry brushes as well to get in there and do, you know, the glazing, but not make it look messy. You can drip if I put too much in it. So, it's gonna take some time. Yeah. That's the drawback of this piece is like this, but, Imagine it when it, looks, when it gets in, I can already kind of see it in my head. It's gonna look So let me show you the difference already. I was using the air hose for my sprayer right there. Since it blows out an HVLP, so it blows out air, I was trying to get all of the extra water that I had in here. So now I've got to sand this and um, work on that and probably put in a uh, filling primer on those pieces right there. I will probably, since this part is not as bad, I will probably just prime it with shellac. Rather than sanding all of this, I'm just gonna do a scuff. I also just used um, white lining, so the white lining decreases and also deglosses a little bit. And it already did that. So it's not looking as bad after it's clean. But that has to get fixed.
So there's a second coat of, of uh, paint on this guy. And you can definitely tell there is a uh, fan hidden this in here. Um, and then this is great primer. And this and this. I had the paint um, basically uh, color match to my color that I use on this and then this is primer also. The color is uh, Dixie Bell Silk Warts. No, it's not Warts, it's the other, Baja Gray. I think it's Baja Gray. And so I had, I took it over there and I had the primer tinted in that light color, which is just basically a light gray for them. And then the Baja Gray is this one and um, I will give it one coat of um, top coat so that it protects the paint itself and then I can come back with the glaze. If you are enjoying content like this one please make sure to hit that subscription notifications and leave a comment and let me know what you think about this video and go watch the rest of my collections I decided that the best thing to do would be to put the bed together that way I could glaze it all at once and make sure that I can see it flow. That's the most important thing when you're doing big pieces is that the flow of the glaze is the same and you don't add more on certain spots than others. I wish things were as easy as they look on a time lapse. You'll be surprised as how long this took me. Leave a comment right now and tell me how long do you think it took for me to glaze this entire bed. I did it from start to finish. I started at 9.30, it's 11.30, so it took three hours. So that entire um, time lapse that you saw was a three hour job. Three hours on bed, three hours. Bad, just this crown right here took almost an hour or probably an hour. I'm not sure if I'm seeing a shadow here. I might have to add some here. I need to look and see if it's my, my lighting. But I will not be staging the bed. So this is the reveal of the bed for y'all. I don't know if I'm going to be staging any of the pieces because they're so huge. Mr. Why Not was adding all of the hardware for me the pieces as I was doing this bed. This one I did a little bit different 
I used only one paint. I tested it. The customer wants a flat finish. So I just glazed it with only one paint and I do not have to top coat it. However, I still will add one coat of top coat on this just on flat, but only one coat because it's not needed since I'm using only one paint on the glaze. Um, I don't have to worry about whether is it gonna run or is it gonna scratch. I tested it before I started it, so it didn't do anything, it looks great. Just one coat of flat and that's all it's gonna be. Whoop, whoop. And this is me. I'm literally just soaking, sweating and I have glaze that splatter on me a few places. But I finished, I'm done. <laughs> I'm almost crying, I'm so happy, I'm done. The final touches on these nightstands and then I'll show you a reminder of what they used to look like. I would also put over here the before pictures of the dresser, the armoire and the bed and then those final shots. Once again, thanks for being here this week. Please make sure that you hit the subscription button, that you set up your notifications so that you don't miss any of the posts that I put on every week. On Wednesdays is my vlog that gives you a recap of everything that has happened the previous week. And then on Saturdays is that special video that I do on one or two or maybe four pieces. Who knows? I'm always just getting into a whole bunch of stuff all at once. Thanks for being here this week and enjoy the rest of this video. Bye.